You're watching the Miss Francois Show. Hi, and welcome to the Miss Francois Show. I am your beautiful host with an amazing haircut. Today I have a great guest for you. His name is Quentin Mezzetin, and today he's going to share with us some advice about, about relationships and how not to be frustrated. Quentin Mezzetin, guess what? Has five kids. Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five kids and one beautiful wife. So he knows a little bit about frustration. So without further ado, Quentin Mezzetin. Thank you, Patrice, and hello, frustrated people all over the world. I hope that I can make you a little less frustrated. This is a story about God. God being God, he decided to grant one of his most faithful followers a wish. So he found that follower on the west coast of the states. So this man was just at home, and God came to him and said, you're my most faithful follower. I'll give you any wish. The man said, I'm really scared of planes, and I always want to go to Hawaii. Can you build me a bridge from the States to get to Hawaii by car? And God said, are you serious? All the climate changes, the different time zones, just the logistics alone, it's going to be crazy. And the guy said, okay, okay. How about another wish? Uh, the wish would be, teach me how to understand women. There was a pause. And God said, do you want two lanes or four lanes? Now tonight, as Patrice already told you, I'm married with five kids. But this is not just my wife. This is my high school sweetheart turned into wife. So there's a lot of frustration that we had to get through. And I'm going to give you the one thing that saved my marriage till now. And I stopped believing the lie. The lie, which most of you might believe at this day, is that love is the foundation of the relationship. Love cures all things, and you know, as long as we have love, we're gonna be good. Yeah. How many divorced people you heard love their husbands? How many of your exes did you love? All right? Love, if your man is telling you that he loves you and that's it, yeah, he's cheating. I'm just playing. He's probably not <laughs> cheating. However, that can't be the core of your relationship anymore, or you're gonna end up like most people. So, not to be a statistic, seeing that coming from a broken home, my wife coming from a broken home, that we were heading down that same path, same stresses, and we loved each other, but it just wasn't working. I decided, I had to get a little biblical, but I decided to just read a little bit. And there's this part of the Bible where this guy, he's supposed to be smart, called Solomon, he says, in life, search for wisdom. And in your getting, get understanding. And I believe that what saved our relationship, that saves relationships out there, is not love, but is the understanding and implementation of knowledge. Now, what are we learning? Knowledge. You need to, one, learn yourself. It took me halfway and two kids to find out who I truly was. And then, forget me, I got to figure out who my wife is. This is the person that I'm supposed to be spending my life with. And I think I know who she is because I love her and I know what I love, but I don't really know what she and who she is, who she is emotionally, physically. What are her goals and dreams beyond what we already created in this world? And all of a sudden, stepping out of the picture and investing in knowledge, I finally started to understand what makes my wife really happy why we have five kids because who wants five kids it's crazy however <laughs> we love our kids <laughs> i can't use that word too much but we understand our children and because we understand them we're able to raise them and we're able to have a better relationship think about do you really understand your spouse do you really understand yourself how much time have you really invested in you and not use the kids as an excuse or that I know this person for all these years. It's like we blame love. Love is the greatest thing. And then we make it as the excuse we use to just stay in sucky relationships and sucky, stressful times. And then we become frustrated, but we in love. So tonight, I just want to let all of you know. I'd give you a whole bunch of steps, but that's not why I'm here. I'm just here to give you one step. 
And that one advice, one step, is gain understanding. Search out wisdom, gain understanding for yourself, for your spouse, your relationship. And if you're married, do it for your kids. Because it also says in the Bible that God doesn't like ignorant people. <laughs> and it's in Hosea. Look it up. Maybe the verbiage is a little different. But he don't like ignorant people. And he don't like it so much that he says, if, you have, if you're ignorant and you don't seek knowledge, he ain't going to seek you. So all of a sudden, whatever you in ain't godly. Then he said he's not even going to seek it in your children. Meaning that he knows that if you stupid, you're going to pass stupid down to your kids, and your kids are going to be stupid, and everybody's going to be stupid. <laughs> so God don't play, and it's in there. Read it yourself somewhere in the Old Testament, Hosea stuff. But seek knowledge, gain understanding, and have a good relationship. Love yourself, love everybody, and understand that it's your fault that you're frustrated because now that I told you, you have the next steps from here. So I'm going to give you back to my most frustrated friend and loving person, Patrice Francois. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not even that frustrated anymore. And yeah, he was cheating. But anyway, on to the segment of today. Thank you so much, Quinton, for all those great, that good information. I'm going to actually start to read my Bible. It's been on, like on the coffee next to the side of my table, just having dust on it. So I'm going to start reading my Bible. You said Pose or the New, some, some Testament, but whatever. Today, I have with me two young ladies by the name of Karen Wright and Nancy Pierre. And today's segment is called, What Make Marriages Work? So obviously they're married, right? Uh-huh. Okay, just checking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want the wrong people on my show. <laughs> so, Ms. Carrion, it says here you're a minister, program, and a program manager at Stony Brook University. Uh-huh. Oh, that sounds like an expensive university. I can't afford mm. to go there, can I? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to say that because they pay you, right? <laughs> so you've been married for over 19 years? Yeah. And you have... How many kids? Three children. And what's your husband's name, if you don't mind me asking? Cecil. Cecil Wright. Oh, Dr. Cecil Wright. <laughs> Dr. Cecil, Cecil Wright. Wright. Yeah, don't want, to, don't want him to miss that and then he get upset when he see the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Miss Nancy Pierre, you're a pastor of yeah. Marketplace Church in Park Slope. Yeah. You have a master's degree in social work and two growing businesses. What's the name of the business? Blue Tress Fitness Apparel and also Marketplace Pro Staffing. Oh, and you're also married for 19 years. That mm -hmm. must be the magic number. Mm -hmm. And your husband, and how many kids do you have? Uh, four children. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. 22, so, 17, 11, uh, 22, 17, 13, and 11. See, that's when you ha have too many kids. You can't even <laughs> yeah. have this count. Yeah. <laughs> so Quentin have five, you have four, and you have three. Yeah. And, a, and a bunny rabbit. Oh, yeah. yeah, whatever. I have none, so whatever. Let's move along. <laughs> Don't be better. Be better. So, Sound frustrating. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> so I just want to, first question I want to ask is, what do you think the reason behind your marriage lasting this long? Carry on. Yeah, so yeah. I always say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good stuff. I say that <sighs> you're married as long as we're married. Yeah. I think we should earn like stars and stripes for that. <laughs> um, it's not easy, but I would say the, the glue that holds it all together is commitment. Just making a decision that no matter what comes up, you're sticking together and you're going to work through it. Would you agree or you want to add anything to that? I definitely agree, and I definitely would, would love to add um, and piggyback off of, of Mr. Quinton. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and, and definitely number one, number one, number one is really knowing who you are. And oftentimes we never get to know who we are because we spend so much time dating for like short periods of time. And, um, you know, you get lost in like each person. So you really never get to know who you are and what you really need. And I know one of my prayers was that, God, you know, send me the man that I need. You know, like one that will, you know, like, you know, love me for who I am, you know, will be the strength where I'm weak, you know, things like that, you know. And that was like a prayer that I prayed when I wasn't even saved. So, you know, and God honored that, you know, with a whole bunch of drama before that. But anyway, I'm just saying, yeah. but God honored that, you know, and I think really, really knowing who you are, um, definitely, you know, that's a start. That's a start to, um, you know, you know what I can't understand? 
I, I believe we're praying to the same God, but my prayer is not answered yet. But yours been answered for oh, 19 years. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't have you on the show, but anyway. <laughs> you're sorry. Right here. I'm sorry. Kind of late. Yeah. <laughs> Since you mentioned the dating part, I wanted to mm -hmm. get in. How long have you, you dated before you actually got married? Um, we actually dated for like maybe eight months. Eight months? Cool. Yeah. And we just knew. You know, we just, we just knew, I mean, he was like, you know, my road dog, you know, he was like, you know, it, it you know, you, you kind of like, it, it, I never had to ask questions. It's like he automatically knew, you know, what I needed or where, I mean, you know what I mean? It was just, it was just like natural, you know what I mean? And it wasn't even a big proposal either. It was just like, yeah, we're going to get married. And I was like, okay, then that's what we're going to do, <laughs> you know? So it was, you know, it, I mean, that's not everybody's story, right. but it could be people's stories if they just really really just just listen just to listen to themselves I'm telling you if you just listen to what like like don't look at what your neighbor has and then try to have that as well get me yes, like oh my god to, he's so tall to try and to muscular better than your neighbor you know but yeah, you? my story is totally <laughs> yeah, different. Yeah, because right now no one likes you right now. Eight months. <laughs> no, I love people, her. People, She's people fine. tried dating for like 10 years and still know. can't get the ring. No one likes you right now. They shouldn't no have one. the ring. What? So we'll talk about that later. <laughs> you don't need the ring if it's that long. I mean, from the moment I met my husband to when we got married, it was only two years. And we didn't start out dating. We, start out, we started out as just friends. And we were like really good friends. He was actually like dating somebody else at the time. Mm -hmm. Scandal. You see, <laughs> home wrecker right here. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, no. no, we were just, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. You were, we were just friends. <laughs> I know. No, but honestly, I, it was like, it was one of those things where there was such a strong attraction and I'm like, you can't like him. Someone else, you know, he's with someone else. Stop liking him. And I just couldn't, like, I just couldn't not like him. Oh, well, you wasn't talking yeah. loud enough to yourself, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> How did he pop the question? Oh gosh, it was so weird. It was so really uneventful. We kind of like, you know, we're both in church and it was kind of like that. We had like that old fashioned church that we were part of that was like, oh, you guys like each other, go get married. You know, it was one of those things. So he just oh. asked me in my, he came to my house. Um, I was with my, my aunt at the time and he just like pulled the ring out and I'm like, what is that? Wow. <laughs> yeah, what, what is that? What, what are we doing? Is. Fine, yeah. I guess. I, I and, you, right. and you were like, yeah, so all right, I guess. I'll, this I was kind of in shock, so I was like, Okay, <laughs> we did it. Yep, they both got the ring. Anyway, so one of the things I always like to say, you know, you ever been to one of those functions where everyone is like, okay, who been married five years, 10 years, and everyone is clapping and we're like, oh my God, that's so wonderful. Yeah, I hate those, right? <laughs> so my thing with it, because say for example, someone say, oh, they've been together 19 years. That's so amazing. They look so fabulous. Have a mm. husband and all these wonderful mm. kids, right? Mm. But Nothing is perfect. Nothing is wonderful. So mm -hmm. I need some dirt. So give me something. The, you chased him outside. Then you had to drag <laughs> him back by the collar. Or to give me an incident happen. Oh, how do you, when you have an issue, what did you do or how did you all fix it? This better be juicy. Fix. I oh, I don't or think communicate you ever or anything. Oh. I mean, you want to have Carrie and have it. like a hundred things going through my mind. I can't just, say that. I'm, I'm okay, like, doctor, yeah, still, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, do you want to know how we fix it now or how we fixed it when like we first started? Like, right, yeah, because a lot of times you go through a lot of things in the beginning too to get here. So tell me either about incident or how you actually went about fixing a, a challenge or a problem you had. Well, I was one of those people who would kind of bottle things. So, you know, things would happen and I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't say anything. And then a little thing would happen and I would like lose it. And mm -hmm. an example of that was uh, one day something happened and... You know, I had like, you know, you have that one button, mm -hmm. and if that button gets pressed, that's like the end of it. And I felt like my husband was just like pressing that button over and over and over again. And I got so mad, you wouldn't believe this, but I literally just took a picture frame and sailed it across the room. You're my kind of woman. Go I ahead. Was, <laughs> and I was just, sailed it. I literally, <laughs> it, it hit, the, it hit the radiator and just shattered. Um, but I felt good in the moment to do it. But what I didn't notice is that my daughter, who was very little at the time, saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that thing frightened her. And How old was she at the time? Oh, man, she had to have been like maybe five, six. Yeah. So it was really kind of a frightening ex experience yeah. for her because it seemed to come out of nowhere, but it didn't. It's because I was holding things in. Right. And that kind of taught me a lesson that it's not good 
to not communicate when there's issues because then it builds up and then you do things that ultimately you regret. And, and you can't take back. You can't take it back. I mean, months later, years later, she, she would say, Mommy, remember when you broke the picture frame? Oh, yay. So, yeah. We'll play a game. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. I'm taking you to the, I'm taking you to the social worker. <laughs> Nancy, Nancy, you? Well, you know, you know the, thing, the thing is, you know, I was married before, you know, for like a good... 12 months okay. you understand <laughs> so you know it, it we, we don't we don't have a perfect marriage however I learned you know from the last relationship you know I was dealing with somebody who was like 13 years my senior you know oh, I wow. was like young girl you know what I mean yeah. and it's like when you go through you know such a horrible experience you kind of are like I'm not going to go through this again so it kind of forced me to look in where I mean of course you know we have our little you know you know disagreements you know but I can say that it's never been something that's like so out of control we actually talk about it and we've been doing that like way before you know what I'm saying yeah. like like I think that's not like a major issue for us you get what I'm saying like because I had the experience prior so I kind of like knew look look I'm not I'm not going down this route again. Okay. You know, I, I, I didn't right. want to fight. I didn't want to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, okay. Yeah. Well, no, no, not so juicy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty boring. <laughs> but it's okay. I got old wait. juicy, but not, not current wait, juicy. With that said, we're just going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Carrie Ann and Miss Nancy. Yes. Thank you guys. Yes. <laughs> so there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like okay. me. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, today's segment is about how marriages work or how can a marriage work. And today we have two people who've been married 19 years each. I don't know how they do it, but apparently mm -hmm. they're still alive mm -hmm. and they're working it out. So I just want to go into the next round of questioning that I'm eager to know. In today's society, everybody always say independent woman, we have it all, we're doing everything. <laughs> and in the beginning, I mentioned some of the things you all are doing. So with such busy, busy, busy schedule and all these kids, how do you all make that work Nancy well you know it's just balance you know you just have to pretty much you know balance your life you know and it, it can't be a um, it's my thing you know it's, it's our thing everybody's involved in it my kids my husband you know what I mean so it, it's kind of like you know everybody's involved in in you know what we do because once you start to like pull away and you're doing like your own thing you know it can like divide you know so you know, really, really just trying to balance the scales, you know. Okay, since she didn't give us a real answer, can <laughs> I, mean, I thought I gave you a real answer. Um, you know, balance. the way I feel about work-life balance is that it's, you know, sometimes you think work-life -life balance, you're thinking of someone who's like juggling multiple things at the same time. Yeah. But really, in, you know, work-life balance means to me that there are times when I'm holding this thing and there are times when I'm holding this other thing. So trying to hold them all at the same time, it's just, it's just not realistic. So when it comes to making sure that our, our relationship stays strong, we just have to make the time. So there are gonna be times when, you know, we really don't have time for each other, we're doing other things, but we have to make sure that we're intentional about making plans to spend time together. Cause we could easily, as you said, go in opposite directions all the time. We're both very busy people. Mm -hmm. So we have to date still. So basically you're telling me on Sunday at around 7 p.m. and between 7 p.m. and 7.10, that's when you schedule sex? <laughs> I, I don't know because I'm trying to understand the balancing cause she said. <laughs> Because that's something important in a relationship, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, it's important. Um, it's and after not 19 years, that's so boring. I mean, how many positions? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, after the first year, I'm bored. So I always say every two years, I should mm. be able to switch. Mm. So, oh, but you can switch. Okay, it's I how you switch. She wanted, she wanted switch, switch people. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the last No, 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 no. no, no, no. I heard you, it. Can, you can have your man do different things. Switch it but up. But 19 years? Yeah, oh. girl. You're not bored? Nope. Because I always, this is what I think, okay. You, you, you're sleeping, 
I'll right? Tell you what and then you, you get up, you turn, and, you, and you think about it the first year. Oh, I love you. Oh, he yeah. looks so cute. Whatever. By year five, you're like, he smelled kind of funny this morning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then by year 10, you're like, get off me. You're, I'm hot. So that's why I'm like, by, <laughs> 90, yeah. by 19 years, oh, yeah. I'm like, why did I marry you? This really, this is the best I could have done. You got fat. You, like, these are different things people go through all the time. People break up for things like this. So after 19 years, mm. you're still going, mm, I love me some Mr. Right. Mm, I'm Especially loving when he's Mr. wearing a Pierre. suit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what keeps that excitement and how you keep that going? Well, let, let me say this. Don't tell me about the positions. Just no, no, no. Oh, oh you oh. didn't want the positions? Because oh, no, no, I was no. going to tell you. I, all I, different kinds. No, no. <laughs> Um, oh, I didn't know it was that one thing, yeah. <laughs> Well, this is Miss Francois. You know, anything goes. Um, but but um, one thing that I actually did, did like a, a talk on this, you know, and one thing that I know is that, you know, when you are like designed and created for that person and you ha you're like a sexual match, I know that might sound like crazy, but when you're like a sexual match, like you're trying to like figure out what the person likes, what you like, you know, whatever, what, what, whatever it is. As you get older, as you grow together, it gets better. You naturally end up discovering things. You understand? That was God's design. That's really God's design. Because once the person like really knows you and knows, you know, everything and knows like, like you want to be in that place where, where you can let it all out. Oh, How many people do Woo! you know <laughs> let it all out? <laughs> because we're very conservative. Like, because, you know, we don't want to be perceived as, like, you know, thoughts or whatever. So, you know, during sex, you know, we're very like, oh, my God, we can't, you know. But no, no, no. When you're with someone <laughs> for a long period of time, yeah. you grow into the different things. And, like, oh, wow, that, oh, that is good. And you communicate and you know and I come from a Haitian family we don't communicate you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. that ain't something you talk about but you know I had to learn my own way but I'm just saying once you like you know lock into that person I can tell you I am not bored for the last like 20 years of our relationship it just got better and better and deeper and it and it didn't only remain a physical thing it became an emotional thing you know it, it became like just so deep you know, and a lot of people don't allow that time to get deep. So, yeah, so they want to be like, oh, my God, I'm bored with this one because you're just having sex. Yeah, you're not That's connecting the with the yeah. person. You know, you're you're mm -hmm. not. Th this is this is like your best friend. This is your your ace. You know, this is who you're making love to. But if it's just a person that you just having sex with and you're just banging, you're going to have that same banging experience every single person you switch to. But you hang on to that one person that's really good for you that's custom designed for you, you will find that you'll be like 60, 70, 80 years old, still loving the way that person touches you. And yeah. I know that's where I'm at. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Do you know every other <laughs> question? Bored. Every bored other bored question, she was like, yeah, balance. I talk about sex. She's like, Ugh. and all of the yes. extra. <laughs> Okay, that's so how you no, there's, nothing, young there's nothing better than connecting uh, on a spiritual level. That's I, like I that's see next that. level connection. Yeah, okay, yeah. I want that. Okay, okay. Well, I was like, I we could pray switch. that into yeah. existence. Yeah. Hello, Hallelujah. that's mm -hmm. how you do it. Ask my Hello. goodness. <laughs> One thing, since you all have so many kids, I wanted to say, right? What, what thing, or what would you say, or you would tell your kids? For them, when they want to go into a relationship and thinking about dating and finding that one husband or wife, what is one thing you would want to tell them or pass on to them? I would say never compromise on who you are and what you want. Never, ever compromise. And anyone that comes into your life should treat you like the queen or the king that you are. Nothing, nothing less will do. Wow. Miss Nancy? Yeah, we, we, we are currently having these conversations right now. <laughs> Um, but um, one of the things that I always tell, you know, um, you know, my girls, you know, and my son, you know, my son is the oldest, you know, I'm like, you know, you want, you know, I, I, this, this whole thing with just like dating person after person after person, I'm like, listen, if, 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 if he can't tell you or she can't tell you that you're my forever, then it's not even worth it. You know, we talk about the whole, you know, you know, sex, you know, we talk about that. And I l let them know like how it clouds who you who you see the person as. Yeah. It becomes like you know a, 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 a like a, a veil. So you never get to really understand and know the person. It's nothing like getting to know somebody as a friend. You know, it's it's nice when like the uh, the relationship sneaks up on you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I tell mm -hmm. them too. I know who's good for you. Oh. 
You know, Mom I know knows. the type, <laughs> the type of person knows. that you need. Mm -hmm. See, that's the, that's the key, mm -hmm. what you need. Yeah. See, we don't ask God for the mate that we need. We got all this kind of stuff going on. You want the mate that is, gonna, that is created and designed to deal with your ugh, with all of that. whatever yeah. it is, <laughs> you know? And I know this one really grumpy, but she's sassy and she, she better marry a rich man. Mm -hmm. She better, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And this one, she better marry a farmer because I know that's okay. who she is. But I'm just saying, it's like we, 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 we talk about, you know, making sure that, you know, you're seeking God for the person that you need. And even in, t in dealing with the secular world, I'm just like, you better know you. You better know you and you, whoever you talk to, you know, you want someone who's going to come in and be like your yin and yang, mm -hmm. you know, who's going to fill in the gaps. Does the person add to you? Get me? Yeah. Does he add to you? How are you now from the time that you met the person? If they don't add to you, then they're just like tearing you down. You understand? When my husband first met me, I was like, you know, just like this entertainer, right? Just this entertainer. But he coming into him coming into my life added to me, got my bachelor's, got my master's. We're still entertainers. But you know what? We grew. You understand? Okay. Together. Mm -hmm. So if that's not what happens in your life, you better dump that zero. Get yourself a hero. Mm. Yeah. Well, that was a sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> that's the offering. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I just want to say thank you so much, you all, for coming on. I wish we had more time. This show is like only 30 minutes, but I finally <laughs> think I should make it like a half, um, like two hours or hour to just yeah, keep yeah. talking and talking. But I'm glad that we touched on some of the things we touched on. I hope you touched certain people. You definitely touched me. You all better be praying for me after this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Gotcha, girl. Okay. Before the end of the year, I better meet my man. Yeah, okay. we'll work okay. on it. Hallelujah. Let so, me the, sip from my Miss Prince. Walk up. <laughs> With that said, thank you again for watching the Miss Francois show. Yeah.